This is like the 17th time I've tried to record this intro, but anyway. So today's video is going to be a little different than normal. It's going to be more conversational in nature, and I'm not going to be making as many edits and jump cuts as I normally would. And the reason for this is because this particular topic, I feel, requires more of a one-to-one -one feel to it. And effectively, what we're doing today is we're discussing the FEE examinations, which are the final set of examinations that you have to complete when you're becoming a chartered accountant here in Ireland. Now, obviously, this is a very specific topic and it's only going to be relevant to those who are pursuing or thinking of pursuing the Chartered Accountancy qualification. But having passed the FEE myself in 2020, I just thought it'd be useful to make this video here today to share my own thoughts and experiences on the whole process for both current students and prospective students. FEE 2020 really was a unique experience because obviously it started off with in-person lectures and in-person exams, but then had to transition into the online environment once the pandemic broke out at the start of 2020. And it really was a strange transition because obviously none of us had experienced anything like that before. And so because we were the first year ever to sit the FEE exams online, I thought it'd be useful to share those experiences with the current students this year so that they could gain some insight as to how best to prepare for that particular type of examination format. I'm also going to be sharing my thoughts and opinions on how I prepared for the ARF assessment as well as the elective examination. And hopefully by watching the video, you'll have a better understanding of how best to prepare yourself for the exams so that you can maximize your chances of success. So let's start off with the ARF assessment because obviously that's the one that's coming up soon. The ARF is the interim assessment for FEE core and it accounts for 15% of the total marks available for the core paper, which is obviously very significant. Now the ARF in my opinion is a very important paper for two reasons. First of all, the ARF has the potential to set you up very nicely going into your final core paper in August. And oftentimes it can be the difference between passing and failing. Scoring well in this exam is very doable. In fact, last year, the average mark was 61%, which translates to about 9% out of the 15 available for this assessment. I scored 89% on the paper myself, and I don't say this to brag, I just want to make you aware that scoring well on the ARF is very doable. The key thing to remember is that a solid ARF score will provide you with a very nice cushion for a potentially unfavorable final final paper in August. The second reason why the ARF is a very important exam in my opinion is because the more work and the more study that you put into the ARF, the easier your life will be on study leave in the summer. In my opinion, if you're studying correctly for the ARF, you should have very little left to cover in financial reporting and you should also have the vast majority of your notes taken on the subject. The ARF in my eyes is very much a win-win paper because the more work and the more study you put in now, the more likely it is that you're gonna score well in the ARF assessment, which in turn is gonna give you a nice cushion against a potentially unfavorable paper in August. And as well as that, by studying for the ARF correctly, you'll also have the vast majority of the FOR course covered, and you'll also have a set of comprehensive notes that you can refer back to in the final exams in August. There's two keys to success when it comes to the ARF in my opinion, notes and questions and in that order. The first thing to remember is that in the ARF exam, there isn't enough time to be able to refer to your notes for every single question. You should only be using your notes to glance at if you're unsure of a particular accounting standard or to give yourself some reassurance that the way you've accounted for a particular item in the exam is the correct way. But again, you don't have time to do this for every single question. And because you can only afford quick glances, you need to know where everything is in your notes. There are tons of different note packs, cheat sheets and references that do the rounds around ARF time. I ignored virtually all of these and opted for handwritten notes. And just to kind of provide you with a reference of what I did, I had a pack similar to this, whereby I had each of the accounting standards laid out here on the side on the tabs, and I could quickly refer to the notes that I had taken on a particular standard if I was unsure of the treatment of a particular issue in the exam. And as you can see here, I do have the principal disclosure requirements of the various accounting standards at the front of the pack, so that I can refer to that for the question two in the ARF, which is all around disclosures. So effectively what I had was all my disclosures here at the start, and then afterwards I had a detailed breakdown of each of the accounting standards by tab. The reason why a handwritten notes pack like that is useful is because first of all, you know where absolutely everything is. And second of all, you are gonna totally understand what is in those notes because you have written them. You have made them for yourself and they're geared towards you as a candidate. Whereas obviously the cheat sheets and note packs that go around have been prepared by someone else. So you might not understand what they mean on a particular accounting standard in the notes. And as well as that, you might not know where everything is. So again, by having something like this, where it's handwritten notes that you can easily access by the tabs is gonna stand to you very, very nicely because you're obviously gonna be more efficient in the ARF exam 
but also when it comes to the final exam in August, you have done up all these notes, you know where everything is, you understand what they mean, and that's gonna make your life a lot easier. Now, obviously making handwritten notes is more time consuming than just using one of the notes packs that goes around on email. And again, it is totally personal preference what way you choose to study for the ARF and the FE as a whole, but I'm just sharing what worked for me personally. But in my opinion, taking handwritten notes is the way forward, because as I mentioned, you know where everything is, you're gaining invaluable learning experience by actually physically writing down the accounting standard and the different journals. And as well as that, that's gonna solidify your understanding of the accounting standard itself, which is gonna make your life a lot easier when it comes to study leave. And I know some of you might be thinking, well, why would I bother taking written notes on the ARF when the ARF is a journals based exam? Because obviously the vast majority of the marks in the ARF is going for the journals that you put down on paper. And there isn't really a lot of narrative that you need to write around the journals itself. And that is a fair point. And obviously taking notes on the narrative isn't the number one priority for the ARF assessment. But the point is that by taking notes on the narrative, you're solidifying your understanding of the accounting standards. And you're also gonna make your life a lot easier in summer on study leave. And by having that solid understanding of the accounting standards, you're way more likely to perform better in the ARF and not get caught out by any niche questions that the examiner may ask. Because what I've seen a lot of people do is just learn off the journals that are associated with a particular accounting standard. But the issue with doing that is that if the examiner chooses to frame the question differently than how it's framed in your pack, then you are gonna get caught out by posting the wrong journals. So the last thing to mention, I suppose, on the ARF is just around the actual ARF toolkit itself. So I would have done this book top to bottom, I'd say around two or three times. And what I would have done is focused in on one particular accounting standard for a study session and done all the question one, two, and threes associated with that accounting standard. So for example, if I was studying IAS 16, I would have done all the question one, two, and threes associated with IAS 16 in that one study session. And if I missed any any points in the solutions to those questions, I then go to my notes pack and include those points within the notes pack itself. So effectively, you're just building the most complete picture and the most complete understanding of the accounting standard that you possibly can. I also think you should hold off on doing past papers until you're ready to sit a full ARF paper in one sitting, because I think you'll get a lot more benefit from sitting the exam in exam conditions from start to finish, rather than just picking and choosing different questions to do as part of your study session. That's more so what the ARF toolkit is for. Also, if you log on to your student portal on Chartered Accountants Ireland, you should be able to access the examiner's report for the previous ARF exams, which will show you areas where the examiner has highlighted that students performed poorly in the past. Typically, the examiners like to revisit these areas in future ARF papers, so just make sure you know what the poorly performing areas for 2020 were going into the 2021 ARF examination. Okay, so let's now move on to the core paper. I'll leave F4 to the end because we we just covered a lot of F4 related material. So let's focus on strategic management and leadership, data analytics, emerging technologies and information technology, and risk management and sustainability. I suppose the first thing to kind of mention in relation to these three areas is that I went about studying for them in pretty much the exact same way. What I did was I effectively watched all the online lectures at two times speed and just took notes on the important areas as the lecturer was explaining the various topics. Now, this was a bit of a new one for me because because I've never been really much of a lecture guy. I usually much prefer just sitting down with the textbook and working my way through it. Before the FE exam, I actually found that the lectures contained most of the important information that you needed to know around these three particular areas. Now, obviously there is content that you need to consider outside of the lectures, but I would argue that the vast majority of the content is gonna be included within these lecture recordings. So if you are kind of stuck on where to start, I would recommend just watch all the lectures on two times speed and just take notes as you go and eventually you will get through it, especially on study leave when you have so much time to study for these exams. So after I'd watched all the lectures and taken notes on the various subjects, my priority at that point was effectively just organizing the notes into little booklets that I could refer to easily in the exam, similar enough to my ARF notes booklet that I showed you earlier. Again, and I feel it is really important to kind of point this out, similar enough to the ARF, there's gonna be tons of different references and note packs going around for these subjects, particularly over study leave. And my approach to this material, again, 
again was to just virtually ignore all of it and just bring in my own handwritten notes into the examination. What you need to realize about the final FEE core paper is that you have to apply the theory to the facts and circumstances of the case. There's no point in having reams and reams of information where you can't actually apply that information to the case itself. And you're not gonna get any marks for waffling or using information that isn't relevant to the case. So by having a concise and easy to understand set of notes, you're more likely to be able to know where everything is first of all, but also apply the correct information to the facts and circumstances of the case. You want to be given the examiner what he wants for each particular indicator. So if we take the data analytics course, this is literally all I brought in for that particular exam. And I don't know if you can see how thin that is, but this is pretty much just the notes I took from the lectures. And as you can see, I have it split up into three sections. So the top section here is for artificial intelligence. The second section is for emerging technologies. And then this last section here is for data analytics. But again, the point here is that you can see how little information I actually brought into the exam. This is just a really concise and easy to understand set of notes that I was able to refer to in the exam. And by having something like this, you're effectively just making sure that you're not gonna end up waffling and providing the exam with information that he or she does not want to hear. I suppose just to mention while we're on the topic of data analytics and emerging technologies, I think it will be absolutely crazy of Chartered Accountants Ireland not to bring up cryptocurrency and blockchain on this year's paper. Now, I'm obviously not setting the exam. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to come up on the paper. But if we just look at recent events and all the hype around Bitcoin and altcoins and Dogecoin and the volatility and the various different blockchains we've seen come out over the course of the last year, Honestly, there wouldn't be a better time than now to actually ask that question as an indicator on the exam. And you as a student should be excited if blockchain and cryptocurrency does come up in the exam because there's honestly tons of reference material out there at the moment that you can bring into your paper, which is going to show that you actually understand what's going on in the world in these topics. I did recently make a video on cryptocurrency and blockchain on the channel, so I'd highly recommend going ahead and checking that out. But honestly, it seems as though there's a development nearly every week when it comes to blockchain chain and cryptocurrency. I mean, Tesla recently enough bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. And the accounting implications in particular are what's interesting here, because Tesla actually accounted for this Bitcoin as an indefinite intangible asset on their balance sheet, meaning that it's subject to a quarterly impairment review. And this has various implications for the bottom line and profitability of Tesla. And if you can bring in that knowledge and that understanding into your final paper, you're just going to be adding tons of value across the board. And honestly, what I've said about data analytics and how I kind of prepared my study for that is very similar to both risk management and strategic management and leadership. So I won't go into any kind of detail there. But again, I opted for handwritten notes and kind of ignored all the various different cheat sheets and references that were going around. And finally, just to kind of loop back to F4, as I mentioned, if you have studied for the ARF correctly, the vast majority of your F4 study should be done before you ever go on study leave. And as well as that, you should already have all your notes taken on the various accounting standards and how to do the journals associated with those standards. So it's really just a case of revision at this point. But there might be one or two standards around consolidation, leases, revenue from contracts with customers that you might need to revise in a bit more detail because there is scope for much longer questions on the final exam paper in these areas. But I would argue that there isn't necessarily a significant amount of work to be done in F4. As I said, it is primarily revision at that point. I was going to touch on the elective, but obviously everyone is doing a different elective. And so to talk about one in particular wouldn't really make sense for the purposes of this video. So I might make a separate video on the tax elective down the line, if that's something that people would like to see. So just to kind of wrap things up, the pass rate for the FEE is very high. Does this mean that you can get away with slacking off and doing nothing? No. But what it does mean is that if you do put the work in, it's very likely that you're going to be rewarded. The main thing to remember about the FEE is that it's all about efficiency. How can you get the best possible grade for the least amount of work? There is a lot of noise out there about what you should and shouldn't do when preparing for the FEE. But honestly, if you just stick to what you know, keep the head down, put in the work, put in the study, I have every confidence that you'll be absolutely fine. Also, feel free to hit me up over on my Instagram at Malone underscore financial if you do have any other questions on the FEE. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.